a viewer sent me this Xbox because they sent it to a repair shop. And the repair shop tried to fix it, but they said it was unfixable. We'll be the judge of that. The repair shop is a franchise repair shop, starting with the letter U. They tried to fix the disk drive, but they couldn't do it. They said it was not fixable because the disk drive is married to the motherboard. While that is true, it shouldn't be that hard to fix. The first thing I want to do is get this thing started up and see if it even turns on. And power and HDMI are plugged in. Oh, that sounds terrible. Okay, the good news is that we do have something on the screen. The fan is working. The disk drive does sound terrible though. So it looks like everything's working except for the drive. Let's get it taken apart and have a look at it. Now the viewer that sent this in also sent along their old disk drive, their original part, supposedly. Hopefully it's the original. The problem is if it's not, if we don't have the original part, we won't be able to fix it because these disk drives are married to the motherboard. So you have to have the original part. So this is the original. Let's take a look inside and see what they did, if anything. It is all taken apart, so. Okay, so we've got the wires desoldered. There's a disc in it, so yeah, that makes sense that this would be the original. Okay, good, that makes me feel good that we do likely have the original. Hopefully this board is the original board, although the board inside here might be the original. I don't know, that's going to be the part that's going to be kind of difficult to figure out. But there are only two disk drives here, so even at the worst case, we might have to swap the board more than once. That's totally doable. Now let's get this thing taken apart and get the disk drive out of it and see what's going on with that. I don't know that I've ever heard quite that sound coming from a disk drive on one of these. So we've just got two screws in the back, then we can pry this back cover off. They have already removed the sticker on the back, obviously. Now we can just get a pry tool under here and pry up on this. And it just comes right out like that. Okay, now I always like to see if there's missing screws or anything broken, but honestly this all looks fine so far. As it should, really the main thing you have to take off is this and this piece right here to get to the disk drive, so that's all good so far. So next I'm going to remove this foot on the bottom here, just like that. And we'll remove this screw right over here. What? That's not the right screw for that. Well, this turned worse quickly. So that's the screw that they installed for the disk drive, or this little bracket right here. Uh, that's not the right screw. But it looks like it did keep it in, so that's not the worst thing, I guess. It's just kind of weird. Somebody grind this bracket down? It's like ground down a little bit or sand it or something? What is the point of that? This is going downhill fast. Okay, I'm not sure I've ever seen a sticker like this on top of one of these things. Is this even the right disk drive? I don't know, let's take this thing apart. I'm getting a little worried here. Just got four screws that we need to remove and that will get the top cover off. Okay. Here we go, let's check out the inside of this strange disk drive. <laughs> they slaughtered this soldering job, but it looks like they did get the job done, sorta. So the funny thing about this is in the letter the viewer stated that they had to send it off somewhere to get the soldering done, and the place they sent it off supposedly must have been like a specialty soldering place, and that's the kind of job they did. Come on, guys. That's ridiculous. Okay, but this thing sounds terrible. The nice thing is that it looks like on the inside, everything looks normal. It's just a weird sticker on it. So maybe this company, like, refurbishes their own disk drives and put their sticker on it? I don't know. So why was it making that noise, though? So what I'm going to do next is remove this, and then we'll take this whole piece out right here, this whole assembly, and just inspect it and see if we can figure out what's going on here. I've heard these make sort of grinding noises before, but I'm not sure I've heard them make noises like we heard when this thing first started up. Just those two screws, these ribbon cables. I've seen these not get installed properly, and that can definitely cause a problem. But all fine so far. Okay, all that is fine. Oh, one more screw. Forgot about this guy. All right, now let's remove this little green board. See how things look under here.
Nothing too crazy so far. Okay, and now this will come out just like that. And I don't see anything that would cause that noise. Other than if maybe some of these, I feel like maybe some of these might be misaligned or something, but I don't know. I don't see anything too crazy in here. I thought it was going to be a lot more exciting than this. Other than, you know, that soldering job. That was pretty terrible. So the thing is that I'm thinking with this is that it was making that noise like as soon as the Xbox started up. So that tells me that there's something that's like misaligned or one of the sensors that's reading that there's a disc inside or something when it first starts up. And that's why it's making that noise. So I'm gonna put this back together and let's just try and put a disc in here manually and see what happens. Okay, so here we go with the disc. Everything looks fine so far. So then there's this little little bar with the gears on it that's moving up, which is normal. It should do that. So then that should push this gear like this, which pushes this over here. Oh, but it is totally bound up. Okay, there we go. So then... So the disc should be all the way in there. But the thing is, like these gears are just like barely moving and totally bound up. So I think one of those noises we might be hearing is this belt probably just spinning against this gear because everything's just bound up so tight in here. Get a little bit of movement. So we got a little bit of movement, but even with the disc in there all the way, the disc still won't spin. And also these are just like totally bound up tight. We can get a little bit of movement, but just not enough to do anything. So what I'm thinking is there's something misaligned in this and that's what's causing this problem. I think probably on the other side of this carrier. So here's what I'm thinking. I think with this original disk drive, I think the main problem is it just needed a new laser. So what I'm thinking is let's replace the laser. Let's put this board back in here that I think is the original board that came in this and then put it together and see if that works. Also, now I need to try and get this disc out of here. I don't know if I can do that. Or not. Come on, don't steal my disc. Hey, got it. I think. There we go. It's best to do this with a disc you don't really care about because you never really know if it's going to get scratched or something like that. This disc looks fine so far, so that's good. Okay, now I need to remove this board because I think that's the original that came in the disc drive that the viewer sent. To do that, I just need to desolder those. That's going to make me happy anyway, getting those wires off of here. That is just some not great looking soldering. And the nice thing is, since they didn't clean off their flux, I probably don't need to put flux on there. Okay, so this is how easy it is to remove these wires. You just touch the soldering iron there and it just comes right off like that. And same thing with that one. And then we just lift this right off, just like that. Okay, this is the original disk drive or supposedly the original disk drive that came with this Xbox. I do notice there's two missing screws here, which is a little weird. I don't know why they can't keep track of screws, but that seems to be the case. So let's remove this. I think this daughter board is the one that came with the replacement. So this laser is what we need to replace. This one already has a disc in it too. There we go. Let's see what this viewer was playing before he sent it in. He was playing. The Fog, a Blu-ray disc. All right, so I'm guessing that's probably where this issue arose from, is this disc drive might even play games just fine. It might just not play Blu-ray discs. That does happen with these because there is two colors of laser that these lasers put out, one for reading games and one for reading movies, Blu-ray specifically. 
And if one of the lasers burns out or gets weak, then it can cause a problem where it won't read movies, but it will read game discs. This laser almost looks a little smoky, maybe. Let's look under the microscope and see what that looks like. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell for sure. I don't know. I mean, I feel like that actually looks quite a bit better. I wonder if this just... It could have been just a dirty laser. So, do I want to take the chance of putting this all back together like this, or should I just replace the laser while it's out? I kind of want to know what caused this problem and see if a dirty laser is really the only thing that caused it. That would be insane if a repair shop did all of this just to try and fix a dirty laser and then couldn't even fix it. So I'm actually going to put this back in and just see if it reads from cleaning the laser. Okay, we do need to put the ribbon cables back in correctly and fully, just like that. I like to do this before the screws go in just to give me a little bit of uh, leeway. The board will move around a little bit. There was only one screw in this. I'm actually just gonna put one in there for now. We can, actually, you know what? No, let's just put the other two in while we're here. I'm just gonna steal it from that other disk drive. The thing is, is testing this right now won't actually take that much extra time because I don't have to put the whole thing together or anything. I can just put the disk drive in and that's enough to be able to test it. I don't have to do any other, you know, anything else. There we go. This is how easy these are to solder. Okay, now the cover. Four screws that go on that. And then we can put this into the Xbox. Connectors, plug them back in. And then we're ready to test. I'm gonna keep my finger on the back of this so the disc will just go right in. Now we need to hook this back up and give it a try. Okay, power. Good so far. The disc drive sounds completely normal. This is the movie they were trying to play. Let's put it in and see what happens. Oh. No power on the disc drive? That's crazy. There we go. There's no way this is starting up. <laughs> that did not just happen. Um, so the problem with this entire disk drive was that it had a dirty laser lens. Now I will say this repair shop that started with the letter U, allegedly, they did give this person a, a full refund. So, I mean, full respect there because they spent a lot of time on this and they did refund them. So I love that they did that and I very much appreciate that they didn't just rip the person off. At the same time, all it took was a cleaning of the laser lens? Come on. So now the question is, do we consider it fixed or should we replace it with a known good laser? It's not gonna be a brand new laser, but it's gonna be a laser I know works. I think the right thing to do is actually replace the laser because a little bit of uh, dust or a coating on that lens made it so it couldn't read. So maybe this laser lens is just a little bit weaker than it should. I'm not totally sure, but I feel better about just replacing it. So let's get that done and then make sure it works when we're done. <laughs> I still can't believe that's the only problem with this thing. You know, one of the things I just thought of about this when I was removing this, I noticed this little spot right here where one company put their silver sticker on top of this other sticker that looks like that. I recognize that sticker. This red and white sticker is very similar to what they put on when you buy these from different uh, parts suppliers from China. And so what I think happened is the repair shop bought this and then installed it into the, this Xbox, but this is a faulty disk drive. So it didn't matter what they did, it wasn't gonna work. That's what I think happened. You tell me in the comments what you think happened. So we need to get this disk drive back apart and get this laser replaced. And now with this part removed, we can get the laser itself replaced. Now, one of the ways that you can do this is just replace this whole assembly if you have a good whole assembly. But also, if you know the laser is bad, might as well just replace just the laser. So the first thing we need to do is remove all the screws off of this thin metal plate over here. There's a total of six. 
Now the metal plate comes off, then we flip it over. I like to have it oriented like this for some reason. I don't really know why. Then we need to take these three screws off where the motor attaches. Then we can flip the motor up and out of the way, just like that. That will enable us to lift this rail right up and get the laser out. So the rail just comes out like that, and the laser comes out like that. So all we have to do is remove this rail from this laser. We'll set it aside and bring this laser in, push the rail through. Now once the bar is installed on the laser, we need to fit this groove over this bar, just like that. And then this rod, we need to fit through this slot right over here, just like that. And then this laser assembly is in place. Now we can flip the motor back down, set it in place, and install the screws. And with the motor back installed, we need to install the metal plate that goes on this. So those little pins on this metal plate, there's three of them there. They need to go in each of these slots. So just fit them down into the slots and then just set it down just like that. Now I'll install this screw first and then we'll put a screw in over here. Kind of going in like a little bit of a diagonal pattern. It doesn't have to be, but helps it not bend the plate. Oh, and I just made a mistake. Tell me if you notice. That little tab needs to be under this bigger metal plate. That's why I like to say I'm the okayest technician that's ever lived. Okay, that goes down there and then all these little tabs go in just like that. Now we're in good shape. What do you think the chances are this laser is gonna work? I know that it did work at some point when I removed it from the console that it was in, but it's been sitting around for a while. That's gonna be so annoying if it doesn't work. It'll work, I have faith. Now I'm gonna make sure this laser is clean. And also just make sure this metal plate is clean. It looks a little dirty. The less dust and dirt that's in the laser, the better. Also, this kind of gives a clue to what was going on with the laser we removed. If you look right here, you can see there's kind of like a film here. So if there's a film on this, that means there was a film on the laser lens. So that would be the origin of this problem. Whatever this residue is, it doesn't like to come off of here, but we got it mostly pretty clean. Okay, now back into the drive. There we go. And I'm not gonna show all the rest of this. You've already seen it at least once today. We'll just cut to when it's all back installed. Also, before I do that, I am gonna clean off this, this rubber roller right here. That will help that disc slide in and out much easier. And disc drive is all back together. We'll get it installed. Now, the thing with these is there's these little uh, pegs that stick out right here that have to fit into little grooves in the case down there. So, gotta go in there just right. And it'd help if I put it in not upside down. <laughs> there we go. See how easy that is? Now we can put this back in. Now I'll install the correct screw that goes over here. Ah, that feels better. Then the foot can go on. Back cover can go on. The last two screws can go on. And then we can test it. Do you think it's going to work? Okay, power on. Same movie that was in it when it got here. Goes in nice and smooth after I clean that roller. But is it gonna play? I really hope it plays. Ah, here we go. It totally plays. So all in all, this actually was a free fix. It just need the laser to be cleaned. If you have a similar story where you were ripped off or a repair shop couldn't fix your device, contact me at the form in the description and maybe your device can be featured in a video. I made another video where I took in a device that two other repair shops tried to fix and they couldn't fix it. I'll put a link for that video on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix it. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.